I'm very happy to be talking to Mr. Rajiv Marotra. He is the CEO of Vehan Networks. And you've got a very exciting project at the moment where you're rolling out broadband, rolling out GSM connectivity, but using uh, a unit that is powered by solar power. Yes. Uh, what we have done at uh, Vihan Network Limited, that is VNL in short, uh, we have designed a totally solar powered end-to-end -end GSM solution, which provides not only GSM voice data and broadband also. And uh, the unit is a very small unit. It's a do-it-yourself kind of a kit, which is installed in the village itself on rooftop. Two small solar panels and uh, two villagers themselves can install the whole thing in about six to eight hours and they get voice, data, and uh, broadband connectivity is there. There is no operating cost because there is no need for any power. And uh, this provides a very viable business case for mobile operators to go to those areas where it is not possible to get more than $2 per month from the users. Because many operators are reluctant to do this because they don't get the money back on their investment for rolling out the infrastructure. Yes, you're very right. Uh, out of the world population of more than a little bit, six billion, three billion people don't have a phone. They have no connectivity. And uh, out of this three billion, 1.6 billion people live in those areas where there is no electricity. They have no electricity whatsoever of any kind. And another 1.1 billion people live in the area where there is some electri erratic electricity. There are no roads, no infrastructure. So, the traditional GSM solution was for cities, urban areas, dense urban. It was never designed for to go to rural areas. So, we at VNL five years ago took up this mission that we will design a solution by means of which the pupil can have the phone because they need it more than you and me because they have no other means of communication. And uh, we have been successful in this and we have installed it in more than 100 villages in India and Africa and now we are installing it in other countries. But it's also good for the environment because we're, we're told that ICTs, um, while they're potentially beneficial because they cut down on travel, etc., so it allows people to communicate without having to actually be physically there, there is the issue of the amount of energy that is required to run ICTs. Um, but this would seem to be a solution to that. In India, we have about uh, 250,000 towers. The moment we go to rural area, this figure will ch increase to 700,000 if we go as per the existing solutions. Uh, imagine the consumption of diesel and the CO2 generated from that. So this solution works on renewable energy, works on solar, clean the solar panel once in a week, and uh, there is no running cost. It's a zero operating cost network. You're involved in a project that is also putting broadband internet, that's high-speed internet, into schools in, in communities. So could you tell us the thinking behind that? We came out with an architecture where we put this small base station on top of a house, and it provides broadband also in the entire village and a high-speed broadband. And in the school, we provide a small solar panel, just uh, about a meter and a half. And that provides power for the broadband for the computer, for the printer, a finger scanner, and a camera. So this is used uh, not only for surfing the web, but for attendance of the teacher or students. And once the broadband connection is there, then you can do it for, use it for distance learning, for video conferencing, anything you can use it. And it's a big pipe we have provided. And of course, the school is a center of a community, so it's not, we're not just talking about students, we're talking about people in surrounding villages can go and, and, and use that have access to broadband internet. Actually, the way we are doing it is, in each village, there is one school, and we provide it in that school. So even the villager doesn't have to, the children don't have to go to another village. In the same village, they will get this facility. And that's very interesting, the cultural impact of, of this technology, because I imagine these villages have been sort of fit, pretty remote, fairly isolated. People have carried on very much in this way of life for a very long time. How are they affected culturally by, by this sudden impact of ICTs? Uh, they're in, the first thing is their income goes up because a person may be uneducated, but he's a skilled workman. In place of two jobs in a day, he's doing three or four. So he knows that there is a return, there is an immediate return. So person will start with a phone costing maybe eight or $10. And then he wants to go for a $20 phone on a $30, $40 phone. And then he wants his wife, his children, his daughters. It's a, it has a tremendous impact on the society for betterment. They know this is for their betterment. So what you, we have to give it to them. If we are smart, 
we have money, we have energy, we have technology, we must provide this facility which we all have been enjoying it for hundreds of years.